enthalpy. Symbol is H. In Greek, the word E N actually stands for in. In English, we use I N N, but in Greek, N is used. Thalpy word is taken from thalpin, which means heat. So the literal meanings of the word enthalpy mean to warm in or to introduce to to introduce the heat in the system. Enthalpy is actually the total heat content of a system that is called as enthalpy. But there is another way to define the enthalpy that is based on its formula. It is equal to the sum of internal energy of system and product of its pressure and volume. So internal energy is the energy which is required to create the system and the product of pressure and volume. So H is equal to E internal energy plus PV that is the product of pressure and volume. The units to measure the enthalpy they are joule or kilojoule or even the kilo calories can be used. It is an extensive property means it depends upon the quantity of matter in the system. So enthalpy is directly related to the size of the system or quantity of matter in the system. Greater the quantity of matter more will be the enthalpy. State function means it only depends on the state of the system and it is independent of the thermodynamic process which is used to achieve that particular state. As it is a state function, so its absolute value cannot be measured, but the change in the enthalpy can be measured. That will be equal to final enthalpy minus initial enthalpy. And when we will be discussing the chemical reactions, the final enthalpy will be the enthalpy of the products and initial enthalpy will be the enthalpy of the reactants. Delta H may be positive or negative. If it is positive, the reaction is endothermic. If it is negative, the reaction is exothermic. Now there is another term which is used specific enthalpy. Specific enthalpy is basically equal to the enthalpy divided by mass and molar enthalpy that is equal to enthalpy divided by number of moles. So its unit will be joule or kilojoule or kilocalories per gram and its unit will be joule or kilojoule or kilocalories per mole and in most of the cases when we are discussing the chemical reactions we come across the molar enthalpy. So specific enthalpy and molar enthalpy, you know, both these are intensive properties of the system, mean they do not depend upon the quantity of matter as in their formula the quantity of matter is already defined. And last important point about enthalpy is that enthalpy of ideal gases, incompressible liquids and sorry, incompressible liquids and solids. It does not depend on pressure. So in case of ideal gases, incompressible liquids and solids, the enthalpy is independent of the pressure. This is just an introduction of the enthalpy. Now the next important thermodynamic term is the work. As we know that work is equal to force into distance. But we also know that pressure is equal to force per unit area. So force should be equal to pressure into area by rearranging this formula. Putting this value in 1, so put the value of force P into A in this equation 1. You will get W is equal to P into A into D. And as we know that area multiplied by distance that becomes equal to the volume. So A into D that should be equal to V. So W is equal to P into V. This type of work is called as the pressure volume work or expansion work. There are so many types of the work that we observe in sciences like the mechanical work, electrical work. But this is the pressure volume work or expansion work which is under our consideration during the study of the thermodynamics. In thermodynamics, instead of volume, we mostly discuss the change in volume. So that's why the formula of work should be P into delta V. The work may be given a positive sign or it might be given the negative sign. The work will be given positive sign when it is done on the system by the surroundings. And when work is done on the system by the surroundings, it simply means that the energy is transferred from surroundings into the system. So it will be shown with the positive sign. 
and when work is negative it is done by system on surrounding and when work is done by system on the surrounding so the energy is transferred from system to the surroundings that's why the work is given the negative sign as positive work takes place in case of expansion of the gases and the negative sorry positive work takes place in the case of compression of gas and negative work takes place during the expansion of the gas when the gas expands the work is done by the system but when the gas is compressed the work is done on the system now what should be the units as it is evident that the unit of pressure is atm and the unit of volume is decimeter cube so its pressure volume work has the unit of atm decimeter cube or you may also call this atm into liters and when the pressure and volume atm and decimeter cube are multiplied it becomes equal to the joule keep this thing in your mind and if you ever forget this then recall the value of general gas constant r in the value of general gas constant r you also use the unit atm decimeter cube that represents the energy of joule and 1 atm decimeter cube or 1 atm liter is equal to 1 or 1.3 to 5 joule basically so work is a process function or path function work is not a state function it does not only depend on the particular state of the system but it also depends how that state is achieved and the simple explanation why it depends upon the process because in case of work we always consider the distance whether that distance is merged into the volume that is a separate discussion but we do consider the distance and distance always depends upon the path followed to bring about the change or path followed to achieve a particular state so that's why work is not a state function it is a process function or it is a path function it depends upon the path followed as the distance is changed when the path followed is which is used commonly in the thermodynamics is the heat actually the complete concept of the thermodynamics is based on this type of the energy which is heat its symbol is q this q can be written in the upper case or in the lower case what is heat heat is basically form of energy that transfers from one body to other due to difference of temperature according to this definition heat is not a physical quantity it is just a type of the energy that travels from one body to the other body due to the difference of temperature so the existence of this transfer of heat this heat energy is due to the difference in temperature if the difference in temperature of two bodies is equal to zero then there will be no concept of the transfer of any heat its formula is equal to q into q is equal to m into s into delta t m is the mass of the system s is basically specific heat and delta t is the difference in the temperature no what is specific heat if you just keep its unit in mind you can easily define it the unit of specific heat is joule per gram joule per gram per kelvin so it means that specific heat is actually the amount of energy in joules which is required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of a substance by 1 kelvin so in this way from units you can easily define the specific heat so q is directly proportional to delta t mean greater the difference of temperature between the two bodies more flow of heat will take place q is sometimes given the positive sign and negative sign this is just a convention in the thermodynamics whether the q will be given the positive or negative sign q is positive when heat given to system mean heat is given to system from surroundings but if the heat is removed from the system and heat is given from system to surroundings then this will, this will be shown with the negative sign as this will result in the increase in the heat of the system and this will result in the decrease in the heat energy of the system just like work heat is also a process function or path function heat is not a state function because state functions are all physical properties and as i have already told that heat is not any physical quantity heat is not any physical quantity it is just a type of the energy so there is no concept of the state related to the heat heat is not a state function it is simply a path 
function or the process function. The next important thermodynamic term is the entropy which is given the symbol S. Entropy is defined as the measure of disorder or randomness of a system. Mean how the particles in a system are arranged, whether the particles are arranged in a random fashion or there is a symmetry or there is an order in the arrangement of the particles. One of the very simple example and which is used to understand the concept of the entropy is the phase change. In case of solids, you know that the particles are well ordered, they show well ordered arrangement because of their very low kinetic energy. The only kinetic energy in the molecules of the solid or in the particles of the solid is the vibrational kinetic energy. When we heat solid and it is converted into liquid, you know the particles are now somewhat free to move. So their disorderness, randomness increases. And when liquid is changed to gases, in gases the particles are totally free. Now they move here and there in a haphazard fashion. So the randomness is maximum. Whenever we change solid to liquid and liquid to gas and we move in this direction, the entropy or disorderness or randomness always increases. So when the entropy increases, it means final entropy will be more than the initial entropy. Mean delta S is equal to final entropy minus initial entropy. Final entropy is more, initial entropy is less, so delta S will be greater than zero. And you can see that when we move from solid to gas, this whole process is endothermic. So I can say that usually in case of the endothermic processes, the entropy of the system increases and delta S is greater than zero, just like the delta H. But when the reverse is seen, then this entropy decreases. As entropy decreases, delta S will be less than zero. And in the reverse case, the processes are exothermic. The conversion of gas into liquid and liquid into solid, that is totally exothermic. So in case of exothermic processes, the entropy decreases and the change in entropy is less than zero, mean it will be in negative. Just like other physical quantities, it is also a state function. State function means it will only depend upon the state of the system and it will not be depending on how this state is achieved. It is also an extensive property mean it is related to the quantity of matter in the system. How delta S can be measured? Just you are required to keep this formula in your mind. Q reversible divided by T. Q mean heat which is given to the system or taken out of the system. Reversible simply means that this heat that is given to the system or taken out of the system, this should be in a very slow manner. Mean the heat will be given to the system very slowly and if the heat is taken out of the system, this removal will also be in a very slow manner. T is temperature, so its unit should be joule per Kelvin. Whenever a reaction is written in front of you, and you are required to mention whether the entropy in a particular reaction increases or decreases, the only parameter that you must keep in your mind, delta Ng. Delta Ng means the difference in number of moles of gases of the system that can provide you the idea of the delta S, whether it will be positive it will be negative entropy will increase or entropy will decrease you are just required to calculate the difference of the number of moles of gases considering the first example here's calcium carbonate when it is heated it changes to calcium oxide and co2 in the reactants the number of moles of gases that are zero no mole but in the product there is one mole so the difference will be delta ng will be 1 minus 0 that will be 1. It means in the reactant there was no gas but in product there is one mole of the gas. So as the gas is being produced so the entropy of the system will increase and delta S will be greater than 0 for this particular reaction. In this case there are total 3 moles of the gases in the reactants but in the products there are only 2 moles. 
so you can see that the number of moles of gases are decreasing when the number of moles of gases are decreasing it simply means entropy will also decrease and the value of delta s will be less than zero for this particular reaction in this case two moles of the gases they are changed to two mole of the gases so delta n gaseous that is equal to zero when there is no difference of the delta n gaseous it means that the entropy remains constant throughout this process and the last thing to keep in your mind is that entropy of pure substances is always less mean in pure substances the particles are somewhat orderly arranged but when you mix the substances then the arrangement becomes more random so the entropy increases just like you can say that when nitrogen and oxygen are present in their pure form their entropy will be lesser their particles will be somewhat orderly arranged but when you will mix them both then the mixer will have higher entropy so mixers always have higher entropy as compared to the pure substance the last and a very important term used in the thermodynamics is the gibbs free energy which is shown with the symbol g it is defined as energy used by system molecules to do work the energy of the molecules itself is used to do work and that energy is called as the gibbs free energy the formula is g is equal to h minus ts h is the enthalpy t is absolute temperature in kelvin scale and s is the entropy of the system g or gibbs free energy is also a state function as it is a state function so it will only depend on the state of the system and not how that state is achieved and its absolute value cannot be measured just like other state functions we can measure only the change in the gibbs free energy so when we want to measure delta g there will be delta h minus no the delta sign can be written with temperature or it can be written with the entropy in the first case delta h is equal to minus delta t into s that means that temperature is not constant but this form is not mostly used the mostly used formula is delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s mean here the temperature is kept constant and the entropy of the system changes this formula is most commonly used <coughs> Gibbs free energy is very important to mention the spontaneity of a process whether a given reaction or process will be spontaneous or non spontaneous spontaneous processes are those that do not require any external aid to happen and these are all real and natural processes and they take place on their own without any external assistance just like the falling water just like the neutralization reaction just like the reaction displacement reaction between a reactive metal and salt of a non reactive metal these are all examples of the spontaneous processes on the other hand the second is non spontaneous process non spontaneous is non real non natural process that does not take place on its own under the natural forces but it requires some external aid to happen just like you can say that <clears throat> the thermal decompositions they are non spontaneous process evaporation that is a non spontaneous process sorry evaporation sorry evaporation is a spontaneous process the thermal decomposition is non spontaneous process and similarly if we want to take water from low level to the higher level just like in our homes we use the pumps to take water from ground level to the upper level so these are all the non spontaneous processes the spontaneity of a process is totally dependent on the value of delta g keep one thing in your mind that the value of delta h alone can never decide whether the process will be spontaneous or non spontaneous if a reaction is given and only the value of delta h is given you will not be able to predict whether this process will be spontaneous or non spontaneous so spontaneity of a process totally depends on the value of delta g if delta g is negative that is spontaneous if delta g is positive this process is non spontaneous now when delta g will be negative and when it will be positive let us discuss it the formula of delta g is delta h minus t delta s the first factor is delta h 
in case of exothermic processes delta h is negative in case of endothermic processes delta h is positive so delta h depends upon the exothermicity or endothermicity of a process now temperature is constant the second factor that can affect the value of delta g is delta s so delta s may be negative or delta s may be positive in the same cases here delta s may be negative and delta s may be positive now let us discuss this case in which there is exothermic process with decrease in entropy if it is exothermic delta h is negative here will be negative sign there will be some value of the temperature and delta s is also negative you know when the negative is multiplied with negative it will become positive when it will become positive so you can simply say that this first factor will be negative but this whole factor will be positive no whether the overall value of delta g will be positive or negative it will depend on the relative value of delta h and t into delta s this value is positive and this positive value depends a lot on the temperature if temperature is kept low it means this positive value will be less in magnitude and the negative will dominate them and in this case the delta h will be negative delta g will be negative and the process will be spontaneous so if delta h is negative and delta s is also negative the process can be spontaneous only at low temperature you will keep temperature low now the second case in which delta h is negative and delta s is positive so delta h is negative delta s is positive when it will be positive positive will be multiplied with negative the overall answer will be negative it is an exothermic process in which the entropy is increasing so in this case negative negative the overall answer of delta g will also be negative this process is always spontaneous now the next case in which delta h is positive now we are discussing the endothermic processes delta h is positive delta s is negative when delta s is negative this negative will be multiplied with this negative and it will also become positive so the endothermic reaction in which the entropy decreases that is always non spontaneous because the value of delta j will be positive now the next case is if delta h is positive and delta s is also positive so this positive when it will be multiplied with this negative it will overall become negative again now the relative magnitude of delta h and t into delta s will decide whether the delta j will be positive or negative in this case this value is negative and this value can dominate only if this value is negative and it can dominate only if the temperature is kept very high so this process can be spontaneous but in order to make it spontaneous the temperature should be very high these are four different cases that you are required to keep in your mind in order to solve different mcqs in the different entrant tests so these are all some important terms which are used in the thermodynamics starting from the system surrounding boundary internal energy enthalpy work heat entropy and gibbs free energy in order to understand this chapter in detail and all further lectures you must keep all these terms in your mind and you must learn them with heart next time inshallah we will come up with the next lecture till then allah fest take care